My name is Marcia Dry. It is November 24th, approximately 8.01 p.m. I'm going to be explaining how to collect the stool specimen. Um, the first thing I do is enter the room and provide privacy and identify my patient. Um, I'm going to explain to them what we're going to be doing. Um, we're going to go to the bathroom or the bed bedside commode. Um, and I'm going to be putting a what I call a hat in the toilet. Uh, turning the round port part of it toward the back. So that when they defecate, it's going to go in the, the hat rather than in the toilet. I'm going to explain to the patient not to void there um, and not to put any kind of toilet tissue or any, any kind of paper there. Um, and then I'm going to ask them to notify me when they're finished. Once I go back into the room, um, I'm going to look at the stool and note any color or abnormalities. Um, or anything that should be documented. I'm going to take a specimen cup and I'm going to take a tongue blade and get stool from two different parts of um, the stool itself because I want to make sure that, you know, if there's other parasites or anything like that, that we hopefully capture that. I'm going to put it in the specimen cup and I'm going to note the date, the time, um, the patient's name and date of birth, of course, and usually you'll have a label for that part. Um, and I'm also going to put the time down of what time it was sent to the lab, because especially if you're going to be testing for ova and parasites, um, you're going to need to send that to the lab within 15 minutes. And even when you're not testing for ova and parasites, you need to get it to the lab as soon as possible so that the specimen is fresh. Um, you're going to put your specimen cup inside a biohazard bag and then you're going to obviously send it to the lab, but you're going to document um, what you see with the stool, you know, color, consistency, any abnormalities or anything like that. You're going to document that also. And that's my explanation. Thank you.